Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to do something really exciting. We are going to derive the fundamental theorem of trigonometry, the trigonometric Pythagoras theorem boy today using simple elementary analysis, calculus, whatsoever methods. We are just going to make use of facts that are out there in each and every field and we are going to derive it using that, okay? Using a simple, very, very true statement that zero is equal to zero. If you know something about fields, then you know that the zero, okay, that the left and right zero are unique in a field because groups, okay? Now, what can we do from here? Well, this, this is a true statement. If you don't have any apple, then you don't have any apple. And we want this to stay true. Now, in each and every field, we know that um, zero times something, so, so if you don't have an apple, then you don't have an apple. Zero times an apple is, is just zero. Okay, apple analogies, I, I hope you see where this is going. Now, what could be an apple? Well, an apple could, for example, be just some T, okay? I don't care what it's called. We are going to call it T, it's just a constant whatsoever. But t is also, if you are pretty smart, zero times, well, some polynomial x evaluated from zero to t. Okay, so uh, this is just t minus zero, a polynomial x evaluated here. And this polynomial, if you write it as an integrator, is just the integral from zero to t of dx. Okay, so far, so good. We have come pretty far already. Now, you might know from calculus that the integral is a linear operator, okay? If you have a constant times an integral, it's just the integral of the constant. So why not bring the zero to the inside, okay? Integral from zero to t of zero dx. Now, what is a zero? If you're a smart boy, you might notice that zero is nothing other than, well, two times the cosine of x times the sine of x minus the very same thing. Okay, this might seem arbitrary, but, but, but simply because it is, okay? Because um, I'm backwards engineering right now where I want to go and yeah, it, it kind of makes up this, this whole thing, okay? So, so if I give you an apple, okay, and I take it away from you, then you don't have any apples, zero apples. Hey, hey, apple analogies just simply work in each and every finite and infinite field. Now, from this point onwards, we can make use of the linearity of the integral yet again to split this up into the integral of this thing and the integral of this thing, okay? Let us move on, let us move on. Nice and Gucci. Now, we are going to get the integral from zero to t of two times the cosine of x, sine of x dx, minus the integral from zero to t of two times the cosine of x, sine of x dx. Well, and here we go. Let us um, introduce some substitutions. This is integral one, and this is integral number two, okay? Uh, uh, two. I, I don't want to drop my, my Hakuromo like this, okay? Oh, it's, 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 it's worth so much. Now, let us introduce substitutions. We are going to make this smart. It, it really doesn't quite matter. You, you shouldn't substitute u for two, okay? <laughs> wouldn't make any sense. Never did that before. That's fucking stupid. Let, let's say on the first integral that, um, so on the first integral, number one, let, I don't know what we are going to call it, um, let eta be equal to the sine of x, okay? Then that means that if we differentiate both sides, then d eta is nothing other than the cosine of x dx. On the second one, okay, number two, we are going to do a similar substitution just with the cosine right here. I'm doing this to get rid of our negative sign more. Now, let, um, I don't really care what could we use. Let sigma, okay, sigma balls be equal to the cosine of x. That also means that if we differentiate that, d sigma balls is nothing other than the negative sign 
of x dx. And now we can plug all of this stuff in, okay? Just, just simple regular or substitutions. Now, what about our upper and lower bounds? Sine of zero is going to give us zero. And the sine of t is, well, it's the sine of t. We don't know what t is, it's, it's just a real number. It's, it's just some parameter. Also, if we introduce the substitution, we are going to get our boy two. Okay, I can bring it to the outside using the linearity of the integral. Cosine of x is nothing, uh, sine of x is nothing other than our eta. And sine x dx, um, cosine x dx, I'm terribly sorry, is d eta. Now, don't want to yeah. this up. Then negative and negative become positive if you take a look at our differential part. So positive two to the outside. Now, cosine evaluated at zero is just one this time, okay? One to the cosine of t. Yet again, we don't know what it is. And then cosine of x is our sigma balls and sine x dx is our d sigma. Okay, coolio, now we have polynomials yet again. We, we have simple polynomials that we need to integrate and we are going to go ahead. If we integrate eta, we are going to end up with eta squared over two, but two times one half is going to be one. So we are going to be left with just eta squared from zero to the sine of t. And same spiel here. Then we are going to get plus two and one half is going to cancel out. Sigma squared from one to the cosine of t. And I don't want you guys to forget that this is equal to zero. Now, from this point onwards, we can just plug all of this in. On zero is going to vanish and on one, we are going to get negative one squared is just negative one. Let's plug everything in. Now, zero is thus nothing other. Sine squared of t, oh, we are going to go into the finals. Sine squared of t and then plus, now the cosine squared of t, after plugging everything in, minus one. And now we can add one on both sides, okay? And thus we know that one is by definition now, this right here is a definition, that's an identity, it's a very important identity, is equal to sine squared of t plus the cosine squared of t. And thus we are done, my boys and girls out there, the fundamental theorem of trigonometry. The trigonometric Pythagoras, the boy of all boys, the, the complex exponential function times complex exponential function conjugate boy, okay? A, a pure result of complex analysis of, of Euler's formula. It just is what it is. And here it is. Now, this has been quite exciting for me. It's, it's just a roundabout way, but it's so much fun. And before we actually end the video, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Brain.org, for providing this channel with so much support such that I can create so many videos on a regular basis. If you take a look at their brilliant collection of mathematical and physics problems, you might find that this website is such a great source for almost everything, ranging from algebra, electrodynamics, all the way to numerical analysis and, of course, number theory. If you would like to understand the concept of, for example, solving polynomials or infinite series a bit better, Preint has you covered. Simply go to their introductory number theory course and the exercise sheets, put in some time and effort and check if your solution fits the provided one. Honestly, their website's format is such a great concept and I for myself think that they have built a great community, wiki page and website in general in the last few years. Preint puzzles you, surprises you and expands your understanding of the modern world. If you are interested in trying Brilliant out for completely free, then make sure to check out the link at the top of the description. Best thing is, the first 200 people to use the link get 20% off an annual premium subscription. They just added a new chemistry course, so it's a perfect time to give it a shot. Try it out, and if you do enjoy the content on this channel, sponsorship opportunities like this really help keeping the channel alive. So go ahead and try out Brilliant and support the channel this way, big time. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and recommend channel if you like. You know the drill. And up until the next video, have a flammable day. Ciao.